praise you, Lord. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you, Lord, for the time we're going to spend together. Thank you, Lord, for your presence here. We ask you, Lord, that uh, your presence, your Holy Spirit, Lord, may be moving this morning to minister life and to quicken the word to us that we may be able to hear it, Lord, and receive it and make it ours, Lord. It may be penetrating deep into our hearts where it may take roots in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay. Um, we'll continue on uh, the healing of the heart but uh, expand on the topic and connecting it with something else that the Bible talks about because, uh, you know, Jesus said they came to heal the brokenhearted. But, you know, when it comes to actually understand and explain the process, you know, there is not, that, that, that word is not quite used in the New Testament except that there is something that is equivalent to it which is the renewing of the mind. The renewing of the mind is including the healing of the heart. Because if uh, we go to the scripture, we see and understand how the two are related together and how actually work. Because, uh, and we're going to get into that today. And when you understand the connection between that, the renewing of the mind often is understood as, you know, we had to just do a Bible study and we get it. Sorry, Bible study in themselves are not enough. You can get people that know the Bible. They are Bible scholar. And supposedly that should be enough to make them able to understand and grasp the spiritual truth and the power of the word, but that, I don't see that happening at all. See, it's a process is much deeper than that that has to take place. Okay, and only that happens, not when you do Bible study and when you study with your mind, because the mind has not spiritual power. The spiritual power comes from our spirit through our heart. And this is where things start happening, where things start manifesting, supernatural thing manifesting in the physical. The heart is the channel through which the power of God has to go through. When you understand that, and we understand the, what is involved in healing the heart, which is really, you know, fixing up the wrong judgment that are in us because of uh, the background that we have since when we are born and uh, even before. Then uh, we come to understand how things happen, how we can uh, cooperate with God instead of getting religious. Religion has no power as a form of godliness, but lacks the power of it, and so cannot produce supernatural result. The only thing it can do is, you know, physical or, you know, not even physical result, but, you know, some mental things. It just doesn't have power. We have to understand. All right. See, this is where, when we understand this and how to apply, okay, these principles, then naturally we are going to be able to connect with the supernatural and produce results both in our lives and the lives of those uh, we come in contact with. Our understanding is important. We cannot rely on our understanding because that's, that's always limited. But when we understand something, we can reproduce it. Otherwise, we hit and miss about getting results 
because uh, we don't know what we are doing. It's just that at the moment we got the right thing and we you know, moved in the right way. But doesn't mean that uh, we really we are reliable sources of uh, God's power. God, you know, I don't see Jesus ministering to people in a hit and miss way. Did he miss once to heal somebody for any, any reason? I don't need to, you know, can see your head shaking. Well, evidently, you know, he knew why. Because he was God? No. Because he knew what he was doing. He had the proper understanding. When we had the proper understanding, then we are going to get the results that he got. And the closer we get to him in understanding, the knowledge of him, says in Ephesians chapter 1. Okay, in the knowledge of him. Now, so I hope that today you can get some revelation. You know, my, the scripture I quote with and I work with, you heard it probably 100 times before. Okay. If you want me to come up with new scriptures, you know, you're looking at the wrong thing. Because, uh, you know, those, some of the scriptures are basic and we need to get them recorded into our heart, not into our head. The only way to do that is to spend time on them over and over and over again until the Holy Spirit has a chance to cut through to us so that we can grasp it. And we are going to get a bit at the time so that when we have a bit, we can get a bit more. Sometimes we can get results because of the goodness of God, even when we don't understand anything. Because he knows and he has to help us in the way. But that doesn't mean that that's the way us to be and the way God wants us to be. God wants to grow and to be able to have the proper understanding so that he can use us. So I'm going to talk about this a bit today. Try to expand on the parallel between or the the way the healing of the heart fits into the renewing of the mind. Okay. You know, um, the renewing of the mind is a process. The healing of the heart is an event. It's the event that took place when uh, some uh, wrong judgment that are in your thinking and uh, cons consequently in uh, your beliefs are going to be fixed with the truth instead of the lie that you believe in, that you quite likely think that this is the word of God. And that's why it's so difficult. Because uh, the, all these thoughts we think that are right, when instead they are wrong. And sometimes the difference is so small that you cannot even put into words. But when you know that you know that you know, you know. And you can get things that otherwise you can't. And you can get the result the, the word said you should you get instead of uh, say why this that didn't work. Maybe God didn't want to do it for me. That's the usual deception that the, lots of people believe because if God promised something, He promised it and it's valid all the time. And everything that anybody says, well, maybe God doesn't want to give it to you, is lying. Because if God promised, it's applied to everybody, you have to fall into the conditions according to which that's going to be accepted. And if you don't can, can get it, 
Evidently, some changes need to be taking place in our heart. Doesn't mean that you are bad or anything else. It's just who you don't line up. Possibly thinking that actually you are right. Now, let's start with, you know, someone, you need to go, you know, Psalm 119, it's a long, you know, Psalm 1 is a very short psalm, but, you know, actually, the first three verses says the whole thing that you really need to remember if you are a believer. If you are not a believer, better read the other ones, last, last three. Now, you know, in verse 3 says, you know, he shall be. You know, first of all, it says, you know, keep away from mixing with the wrong things. Second says, meditate on the day, on the, 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 the law, the word, or in, with God, day and night. Okay? And then finally says, and he shall be, if somebody does that, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That, that brings forth his fruit in his season. Whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. I mean, should we expect that? If this is pretty clear promise, there are no anything. I mean, when you do those things, you know, you may not do it, and you don't, might not get everything to start with, but if you keep doing it, you are going to get more and more. As your heart gets fixed from the wrong thinking, wrong ideas, wrong judgment, okay? You know, when you come into that experience that is said in Psalm 1, verse 3, whatever you do shall prosper. I don't think you have much problem meditating in the word day and night. <laughs> Would you agree? You know, the time you spend in doing the things you do is because you think you're going to produce something good. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. All right? So this is so important. So let's go into the renewing of the mind, because this is really the way it starts, the way we get there. You know, that's the basis, that's the starting point. You know, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I preached about this so many times. Each time I preach about it, I get some new revelation. Now. There says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Okay, so here is, you know, beseech you, here is Paracleto, you know, really, I beg you, I implore you, I, you know, the word there actually means come near, you know, just come along. Okay, so come along with me, because uh, it's going to be good. Okay, brethren, by the mercies of God, you see, because of God's merciful, this you can get this, okay? But, you know, that you present your body, you know, the presenting your body really means that you have to offer your body as a sacrifice to God. It's not that you go there and say, Lord, I'm here. No, you know, this is actually an offering, like it was done for... Uh, when you go to God and bring an offering to him. Well, that's the way we had to operate when we come and start to move into this dimension. So, you know, we had to give our body to him. We cannot depend or, uh, you know, be so caught up with ourselves that we can give ourselves, ourselves, our body, our everything physical to him. Okay. That is the acceptable service. You know, acceptable service. The, if I think it's acceptable, logikos, that's in, in, in Greek, means, you know, the logical thing, but it's more than just logical. It's just the things that, uh, you know, that's what you would expect to do, that God wants from you. Said so that God, love, to love with everything you got, that means, you know, how do you love it with everything you got? You have to give him what everything you got. When you love somebody, you give. Okay? And, okay, which is your reasonable service. Hallelujah. Now, <clears throat> you know, evidently, the word before was holy and acceptable. So, 
You know, the fact is, you know, that means separated. I mean, you're separating yourself from the world. That's the holiness means. Okay, continuing here, verse 2. And do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay. Now, uh, you know, he's talking about not being conformed. That means don't take the form, don't look like, you know, don't, take, don't be the same. Don't be like the people in the world, essentially. Don't let what they do, you know, may have an influence on you so that you line up with them. But be transformed, the word is metamorphosis. You know, that actually means to change. It is not just a change, it's just a complete transformation. Okay, in which you, something that you are after, you are not before. So there is something that is removed and something new comes in. Okay, and you do that by the, oh, by the renewing of your mind. A renew, you know, renewal, when you make a house renovation, that's the word is the same. You know, you don't just paint it, you know, over and keep what's there. If you want to go do a good revelation, you have to scrap it off all this old stuff and put new things in, and then you get a good re re renovation. This is what we had to do concerning ourselves. It's not a question of uh, putting a coat of paint on so that we look better. It's a question of ripping off all the junk inside the wrong thoughts that were there. Because he's talking about the mind here. He's not talking about, you know, doesn't say, go and become a good person. Start behaving properly. That doesn't do it, because you cannot do it from the outside as to come from the inside. Okay, the fact that you're going to be different and do things different thing is because the inside is new and is changed. And what has changed is not your spirit, it's your heart. See, your spirit changes when you are born again, but your heart hasn't changed yet. You are not, see, all your judgment, some judgment are changed, but not all of them. The basic one is changed so that, uh, you know, God has a chance to connect with you. Oh, it's much more than that. But uh, your thoughts, you got carry memories, you carry ideas, you carry judgments that uh, really is working on you, you know, and takes time. The renewing of the mind is required for that change to take place. It starts with your thinking. But you know, um, the renewing of the mind, you know, the mind, the word for mind there, is news, okay, which means not just mind, that's in Greek, news, okay, means not just mind, has a lot of meaning. It means, includes the intellect, your thinking, okay, but includes other faculties, you know, like your perception, your understanding, in, invo involves, uh, you know, your feelings and your judgments about things. All those things are included. So when it says the renewing of the mind is not just a question of you, you get exposed to some information, it's a question of changing your feelings, you're changing your judgment that are actually part of the heart. And you have no direct control over that. So that has to, that's what's going to be happening. So it's not just a Bible study. It's not just that you're going to repeat scripture. You know, you can, repeat, you can memorize the old Bible and have nothing to do with it. You know, the Jews, when, when they were before Jesus came, you know, everybody would memorize all the Old Testament, you know, by heart, you know, if they were involved. And when they, how many of them accepted Jesus? So that doesn't do it. It's not just a question of remembering some words. It's a question of having received 
a heart change, a revelation of that. And this is why God said, you know, I'll give you a new heart. I will put a new spirit inside you. So, you know, there is more involved. That's what we had to understand, and that's what we had to learn. And that, you know, that part there, the renewal of the mind, is a process. You go through, you work through it by being in the Word, by meditating the Word. But, you know, meditation in the Word doesn't do it just like that. You know, it's as you open up and as you build up and as you, you know, allow the, God, the Word of God to work in you, that you get what? Revelation. Suddenly you see, oh, huh, look at that connection. I didn't see it before. Oh, look at this meaning I didn't know before. And you make sure that that meaning, that connection, is scriptural. You go around and check it out with other places. And when it's really the, from God, you know because so suddenly all the scriptures are going to come to you. And it brings, the Holy Spirit brings to you remembrance, the things. And you see that, oh, oh yeah, it's worked together with the other things. You're still there. Okay. Well, that's important. Okay. We have to understand. Okay, that the renewal of the mind should bring about the change and the healing of the heart. Okay, and it's a process. Okay, mind information is not enough. Okay, there is a number of things that have to be in place for the renewal of the mind to happen. Number one, you have to trust more God than your understanding. I repeat that because that's a basic one. You have to trust God more than your understanding because if you trust on your understanding more than God, he doesn't have the chance to show you new things because you are going to screen it out. Your understanding is in your heart and he's screening out what God is trying to tell you so you have to be ready to junk everything that you believe when he's talking to you. Amen. Otherwise you're stuck. Doesn't matter how long you've been with the Lord. You know, I change all the time. I don't like any stuff I preached maybe a year or two years ago because I'm a different place today. Now, <coughs> so this is something important. You know, we had to, you know, Trust God that bonded our understanding, our judgment, our desires, our, our, any of those things. Okay. And seek the truth more than the results we want. Amen. We have to seek the truth. Seeking the truth is the key to connect with God. Because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And he's going to tell us the truth. But if we have already some wrong ideas in our head, we are going to screen them out because says, oh my, no, you know, this everybody preaches this. Who cares? Amen. Okay? Now. Your needs get in the way to hear from God. They can be a distraction because uh, they have influenced your emotions, your feelings, everything else. Okay? And those things are the things that block you from actually being open to listen and to receive. Okay? So, you know, the first thing you have to do is to trust God. Second, you know, we have to get the proper understanding about the scriptures. This is not easy. Okay, because we are dealing with spiritual truth, which, which we, we don't know often. And so, you know, spiritual truth are not for the natural man to reason out or to figure out through analysis or anything else. You need to go through, the, you know, if I start reading all the scripture I'm referring to, I'm not going to be here for, for the next month. So I want to just be able to get some conclusion here, okay? So you had to be able to, to, to connect. The natural man is not going to be able to understand spiritual truth. Because spiritual truths are supernatural. 
Okay, so what we have to do is to get revelation from the Holy Spirit. So unless the Holy Spirit, you know, com we allow the Holy Spirit because that's the problem. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to talk to us so that we listen and we have to get, keep our, our ear open to be able to hear what he's saying. When we do that, then he's going to have a chance to come true. And sometimes we say, oh, no, 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 that can't be true. Because that's, when, that, that's not what people teach us. Okay. Well, that's the way to cut him off. And he's going to keep himself quiet until you are ready to listen. So we need the revelation. Okay. And the only way to get that is from the Holy Spirit. It's not through your own work. This is why it's important to know, understand how to do meditation, because that's the way it happens. I mean, you are there in that space. You are there, you know, the scripture are going inside you, and suddenly you, you, you start seeing things that you didn't see before. Okay? Finally, when you got the new idea, the new things, you had to accept it, because, uh, you know, if you say no, it doesn't get anywhere. So that's where the part of the heart comes into the picture. Up to now, you know, it was just a question of dealing with uh, something, but now the heart is important because the heart is what has to be changed. And you have to be willing to accept the new ideas and to implement it, you know, and to, you know, reject the old one, which is the most difficult part because you are attached to them. Okay, so this has to happen. And then, you know, as soon as you accept the change of judgment and reject the old ones, which is nothing else than repentance. See, when you start seeing how these things work, you see all the different parts that, that you know, people preach about different things, they will come together. It's just, it's the gospel. Doesn't matter which part you're talking, you know, you talk about it, you end up somewhere else. It is, you know, it's all connected together. Okay. And they had to explain in so many different ways in the Bible because uh, otherwise we can't get it. And this is why, you know, if we cannot be focused on just some scripture that we like and minister to us because that way we keep off some truth that actually we need to be able to expand the things that we already know. Okay, so at the very moment when we do that, our heart is changed. Repentance brings change of heart, if it's true repentance. And the manifestation is instantaneous. Whatever it is, behavioral change, you change your behavior change, a miracle that you need, you start, you know, maybe the miracle sometime may take some time to actually physically manifest itself, but it's going to happen immediately. If you see it or not, Okay, the idea is that uh, you have to learn to do that because if you still believe in your senses, you're going to say, I didn't get it. When instead it happened already. And so what you do is uh, you shut off the ability for the Holy Spirit to minister to you and you do not allow his work to work in you because you had the power to allow God to work in you or not. That is your faith. That is your beliefs. That's what releases the power of God. And it comes through your spirit. If you are with, you know, if the spirit is in you, if you're born again, so, you know, if you're born of God, God's spirit is in you, and he will manifest himself through you if your heart let him. Your heart is the gate for things to come in and for things to go out. That what connects you with the spiritual dimension. Are you still with me? So, you know, as you meditate on these steps that I said before, you know, trusting God, you know, developing the proper understanding, seeking the truth, okay, accepting the change and actually embracing it and re removing the old stuff, the old thinking, okay? This 
you know, this is the things that are taking place, and you have to understand how that happened. You know, if you want a description of that in the Old Testament, it's completely explained perfectly in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 10. I'm not saying anything new under the sun. I'm just saying what the scriptures say. But doesn't call it that way, doesn't call it renewal of the mind, doesn't call it, you know, this prophecy, but that's what is described there. You know, trust the Lord with all your heart. That's what I said first. Okay? And lean not on your own understanding. Why? You know, in all your way, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. You see, as you acknowledge him, and you allow, you don't trust him with the things that, you know, the ideas that you have, then he has the chance to come in and minister to you and direct your path. Bring revelation. Bring you understanding. You know, don't be wise on your own eye. Oh, I know everything. If you know everything, you're not going to get anything new. Because your mind says, I know. You say what you have to say, Lord, I don't know anything. You know, Jesus said, in myself, I can do nothing. <laughs> I mean, if Jesus said that, shouldn't we at least say that much? Okay, so I, myself, I can do nothing, but I just do what I see the Father doing. What I get, I'll do it. Okay? Oh, that remind you know, what you need to, to say that properly, that means you had the faith to believe that you have a relationship with the Father, and you have given up, you have presented your body a living sacrifice to him, because otherwise you cannot say those things. You see how this is connected 100% with the things I was talking about in Romans chapter uh, 12, you know, about the renewal of the mind. It's just saying the same thing. You know, do not be wise in your own eyes. Uh, fear the Lord and depart from evil. Okay. And you will be, and there are going to be results there. It doesn't say, you know, now you have to pray and beg and, and wail and everything else. You're going to get something. No. It says, you know, and it will. Be health to your flesh and strength to your body. Honor the Lord with your possession and with your first fruit of your, um, of all your um, increase so that your barn will be filled with plenty and your vat will be overflowing with new wine. So the idea is, you know, all this God takes care, not just the heart and the spiritual thing. He'll take care of all the physical things that you need also of anything that you need. Anything? Seems to me there is nothing else left there. Okay? So, it's not just as we take care of the spiritual dimension in our life, God takes care of the physical one. Now, to be able to do this, you have to believe that. Because otherwise you think, you know, if I don't take care of myself, who will? That's what the unregenerated person think, and many regenerated too, that they think that they don't have understanding, they have come to that revelation, understand? Okay? But we have to get to the place in which we trust God. That means we have faith. Faith is nothing else. It's not trying to get something. That's not the way to get some, something. Faith is the way to trust and believe in God. And all these things shall be added unto you. But if you are going to are going after the other things, you know, the Gentiles do that, and you cannot get anywhere because you're not moving in the spiritual dimension. You, are not, you cannot release spiritual power from your spirit if you are born again. If you base yourself on the physical things. But when you, you see, the spiritual is much more powerful than any physical things you can think. Okay. And that is what mold or transform or produces the physical result that we need because this is what God said it would. And actually it happens. 
And we can see it manifested very clearly when a miracles take place, in which there is a physical transformation that is instantaneous. And, uh, you know, and, and that is very instructive. That's why Jesus did what he was doing, because he was teaching, you know, even some of the things that the event that took place, you know, where it was teaching his disciple to see that the physical dimension is nothing when we operate properly in the spiritual dimension. That means when our heart is not something that you can cook together and, and make it up, happen, something like that. You know, it's something that happens when you think right, when your judgment is right. And then you are not there thinking about what I have to do. You know, just is the natural thing to do. There is no effort to make a miracle happen. But there are years of meditation that need to be in place before to get to the place for that to for happen. Okay. So the two tools that we have been uh, talking about for the renewal of the mind then are the things that I was used before. Okay, um, show it to you. Okay, why do we need them? Why do we need, why, why do we need something? You know, doesn't God do everything by itself? Absolutely not. We are co-workers with him. So he wants our participation. And our participation is simply believing him, connecting with him and allowing him to minister to us, to, 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 you know, produce the changes, okay? Bring the Holy Spirit, especially now with the Holy Spirit, is, uh, it should be much easier than ever before, okay? Okay, let's see some things. Let's see what time is it? Okay. Okay, good. Um, so let's look at uh, the need that we have. Okay, let's start with Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. Okay, we have to see the thing that had to happen within us, and it's explained very clearly in the word. Okay, Star said, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord. So, this is communicated that you should not longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles do walk, okay, in the futility of their mind. Here, the mind, the word mind, again, is the same mind that was, is uh, the, the same word that was used in uh, Romans chapter 12, is news, okay, so as to do with the, in, not, you know, the, the futility of your intellect, your will, your feeling, and your judgment of the heart. All those things, you know, can be futile. Because when we were Gentile, when we didn't know, know God, you know, we thought and our thinking were according to the same, same, the same of the world. Okay. Those thoughts are futile. That means, you know, that they are useless. Okay. They are, you know, depraved or decayed or whatever you want to say. Okay, so they, they are not going to produce the results, spiritual results. They cannot, okay? And uh, so, and this is, we all have been there. We all have been in a place in which, uh, we, even today, I mean, we are not perfect. I mean, our understanding is limited. Our judgment are not really completely the way God are. We, we are trying to, to be as close as God's judgment as we can, but there are some things we don't know. Everybody knows everything here? Well, good, because otherwise you would really have a problem. <laughs> okay? No, the idea is simple, okay? That we all started there with really messed up, judgment and ideas and things in our mind. And even after we were born again, you know, if you have been born again a few years ago, I hope that you had grown up in this time. Because if you had not grown up, there was a real problem. Okay? We haven't been, we cannot be static. 
We cannot be fixed. We have to keep growing. This is the way. Life is change. And uh, hopefully it's for the better, not for the worse. It's to grow closer to God, not to backslide. Okay, but that doesn't happen naturally. You know, naturally, you know, what happens is decay. Okay? That's the principle of thermodynamic. It's true in physical, but it's all true also spiritually. Okay? We do nothing, chaos come in. Life is the opposite of chaos. And God wants to give us his life. See, no, this is too early to talk about that. Okay. Now, let's continue here. Okay, so, uh, is our mind that needs to be dealt with from before we were born again, before we were born a God? Okay, verse 18, having their understanding, so there it is, first of all, you know, darkened. Why? Because they were alienated from the life of God. That means, you know, they were separated, estranged. They do not, did not participate or have the life of God inside them. Now, if you are born of God, one of the things that happen is not that your mind is completely changed and your reasoning is done, you are changed, but, uh, you know, and your heart is completely fixed, but your heart, you know, now God is inside there. That means the life of God, Zoe, is inside you, working in you, and producing some results. So even without too much understanding that the life is already should bring some changes there. Okay. And hopefully you are connected to that and allowing that to minister to you as, uh, you know, your heart allows it. As your heart allows it. Now, you know, um, alienated from the life of God because that's why, you know, of the ignorance that is in them. Okay, the ignorance, the lack of knowledge, they don't understand spiritual thing. Why? Because they weren't spiritually born. Okay, now, and because of the blindness of their heart. See, the heart, if you're talking, what, what, what does it mean, blindness of the heart? You see, the hardness, the blind, the heart doesn't know the judgment of the heart were useless were blind, didn't understand it. So you get the truth, they can see it. You can get it, you can receive it. See, that's what means the blindness of the heart. Doesn't matter if somebody, you know, talks to you and give you the truth, you can get it, you just doesn't, doesn't fit there. Doesn't make any change, okay? It's the blindness of the heart because of their ignorance. They don't understand basic things, okay? And so, you know, um, blindness of the heart, Verse 19, ooh, being past feelings. You see, start with feelings, you know, going in the wrong direction, but uh, the feelings don't stop there. You know, the feeling produces results. You know, you're going to fall. We are motivated by feelings. If you feel pain, you're just going to get out of there or just try to do something to stop the pain. Okay, so they were past feelings. You know, they, the feelings were affecting them the wrong way, and they were going after the wrong feelings. Have been given themselves over to lewdness, to work of uncleanliness and greediness. So, you know, this is the way it happens, and that's the way, you know, temptation comes, and we fall into it. And we talked about temptation on Thursdays, and so on. So, but the point is, if you are born again, if you are born from I, says verse 20, but you have not so learned Christ. So, you know, we should be not at that place. We should not be that kind of, uh, you know, heart closed completely. They should be, we should be seeking, or if you start understanding something, you start doing, working toward opening up to God and get revelation. Okay? So, <clears throat> so we, we have to look at the position that we, as born of God believers, okay, are taught by him. You see, it's not the preacher that can bring us the truth. 
is uh, that we, the preacher can trick your thinking in that direction, but the, finally you have to get it from God. The Holy Spirit has to do it with you. And hopefully, if he's saying the truth, you know, sometimes even if the preacher is messed up and doesn't know what he's talking about, the truth spoken, sometimes can have an effect on you, and you get results, even if he's a crook. Hello? That proves, you know, that God is the one doing it, not him or not anybody else. Okay? God is the one that set you free, not somebody. Okay, so the idea is that this is that you know that, that is the typical example. There've been in history, you know, things happen in the past that you know that these people is complete crook. Yet people get healed. <laughs> Can mention names. <laughs> Hello, are, are you following me? See, God is everything that we need. And if we listen, he's going to guide us in the, wrong, the right way and show us the wrong way so that we don't get into it. Amen? Okay. This is what Jesus said in, Jesus, in John 14, 6. You know, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. See, this is really the way. See, this is the, the way he... You know, and that applies to everything, everybody in the past, in the present, and in the future. Okay, always work that way. He is the one that enables us to get spiritual thing. Through him, we get the Holy Spirit. I mean, I'm going ahead of, you know, the way. He's talking more about the way. Okay, you see. Um, we need to, you know, <clears throat> what he did, okay, and continue to do for us, okay, enables us to get into the process of salvation, okay. His death, burial, and resurrection, they are finished. It's all completed. And really, even understanding that it is finished, that, uh, you know, he doesn't have to do anything else. We don't have to go and beg and pray and do other things. We have to know that what he did is enough. I mean, I'm talking about somebody that is, you know, received the Holy Spirit, that is born again. You should know that he's done anything that he needs. All the things that we need for life and godliness were given to us. So they think we don't have to go around begging God for these things. We have to thank him about it. And thank him about not just to, to make a story or to, to show up that we believe so that people say, oh, it's spiritual. No, it's because we believe it and we expect it. That this is the truth. It is done. It is finished. It is ours. But, you know, they start with us acknowledging him, okay? And he, you know, and the, what he did has many different as, aspects, you know. First of all, you know, he, he opened up the door for us. He made that possible for us to get where we are today. And if you are not there yet, decide to do it, and it's yours. Because believe it, trust in what he has done. You know, and I'm saying, you know, a lot of people say, well, I, I trusted Jesus. Well, you know, then you got it. And if you think that you haven't got it, then that's the change that has to take place. You see, one of the thought that they, they, had to, they had to be changed to be able to, so you had to line up your thinking with what he did to be able to receive what he wants to give you. Okay, but he said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved it will go in and out and find pasture. I mean, he's going to be able, he's, you know, somebody that goes in and out is somebody that is free. He's not bound up. He's not that it's going to be, you know, he's able to roam around in freedom. And that's a, one of the results that should be taking place. Religion doesn't give you freedom. Jesus does. Okay. That doesn't mean freedom to go around sinning. 
freedom to do the right thing. Amen? Okay. See? And he, you know, and after that, it comes all the other elements that he has produced for us, which actually are the blessings that he has given us, you know. And that uh, John 10, 10, for example, you know, if the thief does not come except but to steal and kill and destroy, I come that you may have life more abundantly. So, you know, and he's talking there about life, the joy, the life of God. See, the life of God inside you, that is as... That was what God gave to Adam at the beginning. And, you know, people, it's, that, that's eternal life. But people think, you know, eternal life is something we are going to get to heaven. You know, if you haven't got eternal life here, you cannot get it there. Okay. You had to have eternal life. You know, and when you got eternal life, there has to be some... A difference, evidently, you know, evident difference in your walk, in your life, in everything, because uh, you have not the same spirit that somebody that doesn't have eternal life is, because you have the spirit of God inside you. And the spirit of God was with all the power that God has. I think you should meditate a bit on that, you know. Because uh, you have to realize the power that is in us, that wants to come out and manifest in the physical. Because it's not just there for a ride. He's there to do. Amen. God is a doer. Amen. Okay, he produces results. Okay. Hallelujah. And is abundant. I mean, you know, there is lack nothing. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. Amen. That means you got everything that you need and everything that you will need and everything, that, you know. But uh, if you don't really line up with that kind of thinking, you are not going to be able to experience it. See, it should be in your thought, it should be in your heart and in your mouth. You know, and just when I talk in your mind, it's not that you go around telling it to everybody, it's that you just, you know, that's what you say to yourself all the time. That's the way you speak to yourself. See, what you speak to yourself is more important than what you go around telling people. Because what you speak to yourself is what you really believe. What you tell people is what you want them to believe. <laughs> all right. Are you still with me? Yeah. So that's the way, the truth. You know, he showed us, he showed us the truth. Okay, both through his teaching and through what he did, what he is his life. Okay. So in all the way, you know, he enabled us to know the truth. You want to know the truth? Read the gospel and see Jesus in operation. Is the truth in operation, the truth manifested, the truth that what the truth produces. When we have the truth, we are like going to be like Jesus. I mean, oh, I have the truth. Yeah, so the Jews said that too. <laughs> but didn't make any difference. They couldn't do the things that Jesus did. Why? Because they didn't have the truth. They have a little bit. All right? So the idea is really simple, okay? That uh, we can look, we should look at him. Oh, it says there too, anyway. In looking unto Jesus, the other and finish our faith. And, you know, that part there goes. But, you know, we, let's, let's take some scriptures here. For example, John 1, 14 says, you know, and the word became fresh. See, Jesus is the fleshy, Manifestation of the word. Okay? But not flesh in the negative way. Flesh, you know, the, 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 when the word manifests itself through the flesh. Okay? And dwell among us, and be, we have beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So you see, everything that is about him 
shows the grace of God, which is really the God, God desire to give to us even what we don't deserve. And, you know, the truth, the, the, what is really the spiritual truth that we have to understand. Okay. Uh, John 1, 17, again, you know, and the Lord was given to Moses by grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Okay, so the truth, you know, essentially we had to look at Jesus. Uh, and the way it works is the truth by itself produces results. Okay, is the, the, the physical change, the physical manifestation is, is, is effortless, is the results of him having embraced the truth, the truth working in us. Okay. Uh, for example, you know, the scripture I, read, I quote all the time, you know, John 8, 31 and 32, you know, and Jesus said to those who disciples who believed in him, you know, if we abide in my word, and my, you are my disciple indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's not that they are going to be, they are working and changing yourself and trying to be good. No, the truth is going to make you free from the bondage of sin and the bondage of ignorance and the bondage of the devil. The truth works, is more powerful than all the effort that we can put. But we have to embrace it, believe it. Okay. So, and the life. Zoe, eternal life. I mentioned before. Okay, God's life that is given to us in our spirit comes to us in our spirit. And I just pray that you get revelation about the meaning and the impact that that should have on us. You know, enabling that truth to actually start to manifest itself in us. This is God's power. Operating in us, the same power that created all universe, just saying it, let there be, working in you and me, and wanting to manifest himself through our life to the degree that we let him, because of our heart, being the gatekeeper. The one that God keep it closed and leave it there so that it can't do anything. Okay. We had to cooperate with him for his power to be manifested. And you're not up trying to just be good boys and girls. It's by getting, you know, the understanding of him get uh, receiving the understanding that we need so that uh, he can do, he can be himself. And can influence our behavior and our results and the changes that we can produce in ourselves and others. Okay? So, you know, there are many scriptures you know, saying, talking about that, you know, John eleven twenty five, and Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, shall live. And those who live and believe in me, they shall never die. Do you believe this? I mean, that was a critical thing. I mean, we should not look at the physical thing on a person and, 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 and be limited by what we see in the physical. See, we are much more than that. Hallelujah. The power, the life of God is in us. See, at the beginning, before we got so corrupted by the world, people will live 800 years. Because just not even because they were so spiritual, because they weren't. Because just there was enough light in their left, life in us that, that was operating and having an effect on their physical body. Mm -hmm. 
They weren't trying to exercise faith. Most of them anyway. They were messed up. Okay? Even the best one of them. In uh, John 5, uh, John, 1 John 5, 11 and 12 says, And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. So this is why he's, you know, from uh, this, this the, you know, the, the, the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? Uh, in his son. The, he was the son as life. It who does not have the son does not have life. So you can see, you know, the implication. Okay, when uh, we, somebody is born again, they got God's life, in, eternal life inside them. Eternal life. They're going to never die. Unless they blotch it, they better reject it, they better push it away. Okay, so I think one should meditate on that thought, that idea, to really see what you should expect to take place in your life, physically. If the life is inside you, you know, the life of God is inside you, sickness cannot really, as you let the life operate and come out from your spirit to your body, sickness couldn't stay there. It's because of some wrong thinking, some wrong judgment that we think, oh, I'm sick now. When instead, you know, and, and that slowly becomes stronger and stronger so that it can take over. But, you know, I think people that have been healed and the enemy tries to put it back on them, if they take action immediately, the things just goes. Logically, doesn't make any sense. Because he's not limited by your logic. This is the way God works. This is the life of God that is stronger, stronger than the other, the life, the, the life of sickness and things, you know. We have the life of God working in us. I'm giving you a verse here that uh, you should work on for this week on. Okay. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. It says, but he who is joined with the Lord is one spirit with him. I mean, grasp your mind around that. All right, so let's go back to efficiency. Let's let's go in the time here. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Okay, we said the last verse in Ephesians chapter four, verse twenty. That I said, you know, but you have not so learned of Christ. Okay, we have learned something different from it. We have got the, you know, the way, the truth, and the life working inside us. That life is, you know, the, His Word working in us should bring us truth. The truth brings us freedom. Freedom gives us victory in all the areas. You know, we should see manifested. You know, the, the verse I started today. You know, with uh, first, I um, mean, um, Psalm one, verse three. You know. Everything you shall do shall prosper. I mean, I like that, that kind of an idea. <laughs> Don't you? Yes. Okay. The point is, you know, are you ready to offer your body a living sacrifice? That's where the condition is. Okay? And that condition is based on the fact that you trust God more than yourself. Okay. All right. Um, the following verse, Ephesians 4.21 says, If indeed you have heard him, you have been taught, have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. 
You see, the thing is, as we connect with Jesus, as we see the way Jesus operated, as we see, listen to what he taught, the truth is going to get to us. That's the way we are going to get the truth. That's the way we are going to be corrected of the wrong thinking. Because when we see ourselves not be able to do and think the way he thought, well, there is something wrong with our thinking. His thinking was right. His ideas were right. He knew his judgment were right. He said, my judgment is righteous. What does it mean? Exactly what I'm said. Okay, he thought the way God thinks. And how did he get it? Because he was God? No. He got it because he allowed the word to work in him, and he became the word made flesh. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. To decide what I'm going to do here. Um, I'm going to read a few more verses here. Say. So as he taught us, and as he ministered to our spirit, okay, as the life of God, the eternal life is inside us, trying to get, you know, the life is the li life things, you know, is not the, the thought. The thought is the work of the Holy Spirit working in us. But the power of God is the life of God. Okay, so the power. We had too much power to handle. And, you know, the, the thing is, we had to learn to let it come out. We had to connect with him. You see, we are blocking the power of God inside ourselves so that they cannot do the things that God wants to do. Because the things that God wants to do is what Jesus did. Are you still there? You know, the things that Jesus did, Jesus, Jesus said, you know, the things that I do, you shall do also even greater things that I do, because I go to the Father. I can give you the Holy Spirit. And that was the same way as he operated. He wants us to be like him, not because we are religious and, you know, sandals and so on, but because, uh, you know, we manifest the love, the power, and the anointing of God to set people free and to walk free ourselves. Without trying to be good. Actually, probably when we go start operating more and more that way, we turn off lots of religious people because uh, Jesus was said, you know, he had a demon. Okay, so it says in verse 22, and you put off concerning the former conduct, they are going back to the renewal of the mind, you know, you know, conform to the world. You know, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. So, you know, you just put off, you know, but you don't put off because you are trying to, to be good, okay? It's not a religious action they're putting off. It takes place as a result of the renewal of the mind. Okay, that the renewal in the be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Oh my goodness, you know, I did I heard lots of people talking about that, they always mess it up. What is the spirit of your mind? There is one word for it. The heart. See, the heart is the connection between your spirit and your mind. And so is the, low, the deeper part within yourself of your mind, the one with the judgment that determines what God can do and what you are going to be able to receive. So it's not something new now that has, you know, you're not that there's a part on the spirit, this is the mind. No, this is the connection between your spirit and your mind. It's the gate of your spirit. Okay, uh, the spirit of your mind. <clears throat> and you put on the new man which was created according to God in the true righteousness and holiness. 
You see, it was created. The new man is the, was made by God, not by you. It's not your work, it's not your effort. It's made by God when you were born of him, born of God, okay? He created you. So what uh, is involving now is to allow this process of uh, this uh, putting on the new man and putting off the new of man is nothing else. But what happens in your heart? When you screen off some old judgment that are wrong and put on some good judgment that are right. It's not something external. It's something internal he's talking about. It's not mo behavior modification. It's just that you change the way you judge things according to God's judgment so that uh, what you judge, you are going to do because uh, the judgment you have in your heart determine your action, your behavior, uh, your results. Are you following me? See, this process of putting on and putting off is not behavior modification. It's heart change. When your heart is changed, everything changes. Otherwise, it's religion. Man's work, mind work. So, and the, that process takes place, you know, as I explained before. You know, I, I gave you some tools last week according to which you can do this work in the heart to fixing it up. One was, uh, you know, the art monitor. And I hope you start to do that. And I'm going to go more into that to explain how the things work. Okay. And the meditation of the word. The whole two things go together. Meditation in the word and, and the art monitor cannot be separated because when you are there trying to put down some of the things, you have to be praying, asking God, meditating on the things. He shows us things and you start meditating on the stuff he's showing you. And it's just keep going and going and going and growing. And you're going to be changed. You start to see all the pieces come together. Praise the Lord. Well, <clears throat> I think for today, we are going to close. You get anything? Yes. All right. All right. So I'm going to, you know, the important thing is not something in your mind. Did you get any revelation from the Lord as I was speaking? That's the key. Have you grasped something new so that you can put it to work inside you? Well, okay, that's good. So we are going to pray together that this, what is starting now, you know, there is the, the, all the steps I said before, trusting God, you know, just, just, just finally, uh, make, uh, accepting the, the new thought and rejecting the old ones. Those things need to be taking place. So, you know, you have to make a commitment for that process. Because it's not going to happen by itself. You know, you go out of this place, take the car or whatever you do, in um, half a day you forgot everything. Amen? Unless you have a mind much better than mine, <laughs> which doesn't mean very much, but the point is, <laughs> you know, so the, the idea, what I'm saying to you is, uh, you know, you have to, okay, I'm going to work on this. You know, you can, may have taken notes, you may have, uh, may have a look at the video that is going to come up tomorrow, whatever, you know, whatever it is, unless you do some work, see, that's the only work that you are required to do. The spiritual work that we need to do, not the dead works, but according to which we get brownie point with God. Okay. <clears throat> After that, by itself, things are going to happen. So I'm going to, you know, we're going to pray about that. That you make a commitment today. So you have to pray that you make the commitment because it's no use for me to pray because I've been doing it already. But I can do it with you. All right? Oh, man, he's going to do it with me. Show it to me with your hand. That helps. Okay, all right. Praise you, Lord. Okay, let's go before the Lord then in prayer. 
Okay, praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for everything you had done for us. Thank you that, Lord, uh, Jesus, you sent Jesus, Lord, that he can be the way, the truth, and the life for us. That we may go to him, Lord, and to the world, Lord, to, to appropriate everything that you had done. Lord, that the, the, the things that we may come to realize, the Lord, that uh, it's just for us to open up and receive. Take, Lord, with... Uh, Lord, motivated by our will and our desire to get closer to you and to be able to receive the things you have done for us. We just ask you, Lord, that you show us the limiting beliefs, the limiting, Lord, judgment that we have, that are not righteous judgment, Lord, but are worldly judgment, Lord, or religious judgment is even worse, Lord, that we may understand, Lord, and letting go, putting off the old man, Lord, and putting on the new man created in Christ Jesus, Lord, as we come to your feet to hear, to listen, to receive, and to appropriate what you have done. Thank you, Lord. But we know, Lord, that it's your desire for us to break through, not to stay stuck in our problems. Help us to open our minds and our heart. Lord, to apply ourselves, to offer our body a living sacrifice unto you, Lord, holy and acceptable. Lord, that we may know your will. Lord, that we may know the call that we have in our life to manifest your glory by the transformation that takes place, that brings us from a place of bondage to a place of freedom. Thank you, Lord, that we know that you love us more than we can ever understand. But Lord, that love is so big and so powerful that can bring us from faith to faith and glory to glory. And we just come to you, Lord, to receive today, and make a commitment to work, Lord, not the works of the flesh, but Lord, work in our heart to get that transformation going and growing and Lord overcoming, that we may be overcomers, undefeated overcomer, Lord, pleasing you so that we may know your will and we may see it manifested in our life. We just pray, thanking you and praising you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord.